When we use the term cross rate, we're simply talking about foreign exchange quotes where the dollar is not the base currency. So instead of looking at how many Indonesian rupiah we might get for one dollar, a cross rate would be where we're looking at how many rupiah we get for a dirham, for example, in the United Arab Emirates. The problem we have is that the dirham rupiah rate is not regularly quoted on a screen since it's not a very common pair of currencies to look at together. So we're going to have to work it out for ourselves. We can see from our screen what the rupiah and dirham rates are to the US dollar. So now we can work out the dirham rupiah cross rate. We can see that both the rupiah and the dirham are quoted against the dollar, the dollar being the base currency. So when this is the case, with both currencies having the dollar as the base currency, we simply divide one by the other. In this case, I want to see how many rupiah there are to the dirham. So I divide the rupiah FX rate by the dirham FX rate, and here we find that one dirham gets you 3,637 rupiah. Well, what happens when one currency is quoted against the dollar, but the other isn't? Let's use an example of the Swiss franc against the pound. Now, the Swiss franc is quoted with the dollar as the base currency. And here we can see that for one dollar, I get 96 Swiss centime or 0.96 of a franc. When we look at sterling against the dollar, what we refer to as cable in the dealing room, sterling is the base currency. So here, one pound gets you $1.30. Since the dollar is the base currency on one, but not the other, we multiply the two FX rates. And now we find that one pound gets you one franc, 24.8 centime. If we're to calculate cross rates accurately, we need to take into account bid ask or bid offer quotes. Now I'm using the example of a British tourist who wants to go to Switzerland. So she will need to sell pounds and buy francs. Well, let's say she does this in two steps to highlight the bid-ask spreads. The bank is quoting two-way rates for cable and the Swiss franc. Our tourist buys dollars with her pounds. Of course, the bank will bid the pound off the client and give back as few dollars as possible, in this case $1.30. Armed with these dollars, the client wants to now swap them into Swiss francs. Now, for every dollar the client hands over, the bank's going to give her as few Swiss francs as possible, in this case, 96 centimes for every dollar. So here's the bigger picture of what's going on from the bank's point of view, and you can see how they're making their money. OK, let's look at another example. So here we have a Dubai-based family that wants to go to Bali on holiday. They go to the bank to sell some dirhams, which is the currency used in the UAE, and the bank is quoting two-way rates on the dirham and the Indonesian rupiah, which is what's used in Bali. So first, the tourist buys dollars, for which he will have to hand over three dirhams, 0.6735, for every dollar he wants. The bank will always get as many dirhams as possible when offering the dollar. Now the tourist has got the dollars, the tourist wants to swap these dollars into rupiah. The bank will bid these dollars off the tourist and give back as few rupiah as possible, in this case 13,360. So just remember the sad rule of thumb, unfortunately the bank always wins. Always assume the worst rate if you're dealing from the customer's point of view.